Hey everyone. Hello. Good morning. We are so excited that you are here. Welcome to North Shore. Yeah, whether you guys are joining us online or in, in person on our Kirkland campus, we're super excited that you guys are here. We know, your shirt tells us. I know, you're I so, should just say You're I'm always so, so glad. glad you're here, it's true. <laughs> I like that about you, Steven. Your shirt's well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Becky, I'm super excited to be here with you today. Yeah, this uh, is our first time. It is, yeah, my name is Steven. If we have not had the chance to meet yet. Yep, I'm Becky, and it's just great to be with you this morning. Yeah. So. So if you're watching online, we would love for you guys to jump over in the comment section, uh, maybe say hello. Uh, yeah, it was a gorgeous week in the Pacific Northwest. Yes. So for yep. those of you who live in this area, maybe you can say with just emojis how you spent the week. Or if yes. you're you know, tuning in from somewhere else. Yeah. We would love to see that too. Put your snowman in there. I don't know. Is yeah. there snow anywhere? Maybe like if we yeah. have some people watching from like Southern Hemisphere. Uh, <laughs> you can even do that if you're in person on our Kirkland campus. Uh, you can pull out your phone, post something in the uh, little chat section there. We love to engage with you guys there. And another thing you can do while you have your phone out and you're commenting is share the stream. It's, uh, it's just a great opportunity to get just a positive, good message of the gospel out there. And we would love for you to take a moment, pull your phone out, Go yeah. to Facebook or YouTube or website. Clubhouse. I don't Club, know. We, I don't even know what that is. TikTok, <laughs> if you want to. Whatever you're doing, uh, share the stream. <laughs> Let people know what you're doing this morning. We're excited that you're here. Yeah. And if it's your first time, we'd love to connect with you. You can text North Shore to 97000, and that would just give us a chance to get to hear a little more of your story and help you find yeah. some ways to connect. Yeah, so. it's been so, so good to connect with you guys. And yeah, as Becky said, if this is your first time or you just haven't had a chance to plug in yet, that's a great, uh, a great way to yeah. get a little more info. So yeah. we got to jump right in. We got a lot to cover today. Okay. A lot of, a lot of big stuff happening. Down to business. Down to business. I'm ready. <laughs> uh, this is great. Down to business as we go into this next section. Uh, we're starting a new series this week called I Can Relate. Uh, if you joined us for Easter, a, if you didn't join us for Easter, you should go back and watch Easter That's after true. this because it was, it was great service. so good. Yeah. Uh, but if you joined us, you saw a little, what do we call it? A teaser, a bumper? Just a little taste. Trailer. I call little, it a trailer, but a that's trailer, just me. Sure, whatever you want to call it, of uh, maybe some experiences you haven't had personally, but as you watch them, you're like, I can relate to that. So yeah, uh, check totally this out. Relate. That is so good. And it's so crazy how much I can relate to that. Literally last week, I was walking around downtown Kirkland and some dude stole a 10 pound bass out of my hands too, so. That's weird, that happened to me two weeks super ago. Relatable. So relatable, oh my gosh. Um, no, we really are starting a new series today called I Can Relate. And I don't know if any of you have had life that goes a little differently yes. than what you had in mind or how you anticipated things going, yeah. but uh, that's all of the kind of stuff we're gonna be talking about, so. Yeah, and, uh, and we have something that we're just gonna keep the fun rolling. Okay. Keep the fun rolling. We've got a little game to help us get even more in the mindset of, uh, of I can relate. That I, I believe it's called, what what happens next, which to me feels like We've, the last year of my life. Yeah, is a game exactly. of what happens next. So we're both completely surprised. We yes. have no idea. We have not seen any of this footage. So no Brian is gonna uh, tell us what to do. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. There's. So this game is called magic. What Happens Next, and what you're gonna do is watch a short clip. Okay. And as the name suggests, you will then guess what <laughs> happens next. Okay. And if anyone wants to play along in the chat, they can also type some answers in there. Yes. Um, but because it's spring and because my favorite sport, baseball, is back, we're going to open with this clip from a Mariners game from a few years ago. So okay. let's check it out. <laughs> so what happens? Uh, what happens next? Are you a baseball fan? Uh. Okay. Um, uh, all right. I'll make my guess. I see three people converging. Yeah. That's six people. Three. Thank you for that. That's helpful. <laughs> three people all converging together, and there's a wall on the other side of it. I'm gonna make the bold guess that all three of them go Fly over the over. wall. Yep. I was thinking they realize that the ball is going foul and they just play leapfrog or something. Oh, that would be really funny too. <laughs> okay. Well, let's, let's find see. out. Okay. Let's find out what happens next. Oh. 
Oh, a chip. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Wipes his face. So, uh... <laughs> He stole someone's nachos. That is obviously pre-COVID. That's what anyone uh, should do in that situation. <laughs> right? You know I, mean? I mean, if someone's putting nachos in your face, like yeah. you better believe them. You're not gonna one. not eat it. No. So yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yo nachos, nacho we nachos. Here good. we go. All right, uh, we're gonna take a dive uh, a little more into the animal kingdom. Okay. Um, for this next clip, so check this out. There's no sound, so. Okay. Watch it. Oh, that, there is a tiger. Oh, all right. What this happens is, next? If this bird gets obliterated by this tiger, uh, <laughs> we're gonna be like, okay, and moving on to the next one. <laughs> all right, I'll let you guess first. Tiger coming up on the bird. I feel like on this one, there's gonna be like a larger animal that somehow like oh. pounces on the tiger. Oh, I like pounce. What a pounce. <laughs> What would that be? Pounce. What what kills time? Scotty, if you use the word pounce <laughs> in the message today, I will buy you a coffee. Um. Uh, I like pounce. I'm gonna use that in my answer as well. I think the bird is going to pounce on the tiger Ooh, okay. and like then do a little little piggyback. What swing happens, match. Brian? <laughs> All right, can't well, let's, let's find out what happens okay. next. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, what the? <laughs> the ultimate yes. juice. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow, good for that little bird. <gasps> That's so cool. Free. What a yep. smart little guy. I think the Seahawks reached out to the duck. Because um, we need a new running back. So. Yeah, wow. <laughs> you know. That really was surprising. It was. It was. All right, so we're going to take a dive to a sport that we all can relate to, and that okay. is the wonderful sport of bowling. Oh, yep. And I believe this is happening at a championship game. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think one of the last frames, so let's check out what. Big deal. What Big happens deal. next? Be sure that everything will be <laughs> perfectly in order. We're going to be last pins, and it is a duck meal. Oh, All dude, right. how dare you? <laughs> There's so much anxiety next? in these moments. I know. I love the Denny's in the background. That's got me hungry. Denny's? There was like a big Denny's, Denny's sign sponsored oh. by Denny's. Yeah. yeah. Okay, go I ahead. I wish we were sponsored by Denny's. I know. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Do <laughs> uh, you want me to guess first this time? You, yeah, sure. Um, okay, I think the ball does not release and uh, the ball takes him on a ride down the lane. So just whoosh, Superman straight out. Yeah, I mean, I guess just because it's this game, I figure yeah. something crazy, like, I don't know, I think it gets stuck in his thumb and like uh -huh. bonks him on the head, I don't know. My son is like rare, rare, like weirdly obsessed with bowling, actually. Oh, he's wow. like four show and him this? Maybe he went for the first time and him. now he always wants to go bowling, so this could be <laughs> yes. in my future. A lot of bowling well, Saturdays, let's, let's, let's see what happens. Let's take a look into your son's future. <laughs> uh, so here it comes. Let's see here and... Oh, oh you got it! Come on! Come on! You yes. got it, dude! Wow, that applause is for Such me. Keep it coming, genius. everybody. Keep it coming. Oh my god. Dude, goodness. what a legend. Oh, what a How guy. How did you know? I you could just sense like I feel like there was a bit of uh, insecurity in his walk that I was like, this dude's about to just <laughs> it's, it's fly. Go <laughs> that uh, was really funny. Well there it is. Good job, you guys. Wow. Well thank it. you, Brian, for those. Uh, I don't know if I necessarily can relate to any of those, but the the <laughs> feeling of like, all right, I'm gonna bowl a strike here and then just like, well, now I'm just I'm off to the races and it's going true. for a ride. You get your mindset on something and it's just yeah takes a turn. Well, uh, well, as we said, all of that is related to a series that we're starting today. I can relate. Um, just talking about so many things that we all deal with, uh, that we all can relate to and yeah. understand and figure out uh, how to walk through those in a better way. So I'm really yeah. excited. Um, again, if you're just joining us, welcome to North Shore. My name is Steven and, uh, and this is Becky. I'm Becky, nice to meet you. And Becky gets to uh, work with the team that is something that we call here called starting point for uh, for anyone who is looking to get more plugged into what's happening at North Shore uh, and stick around till what, like halfway through? A couple more minutes, a couple minutes. Becky's yeah. actually gonna walk us through more information on just what starting point is yep. and how you can get plugged in, so. I love my job. Short version is it's awesome and you should sign up, so. Wow, yeah. what a pitch, what a sales <laughs> pitch. Well you guys, we are just about to jump into worship together. We are so excited that you're here with us again and uh, we're gonna have an incredible service. So welcome to North Shore.
Hey, thanks so much for joining us with North Shore Online. I encourage you to sing along with us. We're going to worship Jesus today. I hope this hour encourages you wherever you're at. So let's sing together. Welcome to North Shore. My name is Becky and it's so good to be with you all today. One of the things I love most about this church is the way that I have experienced everyone to be so open and welcoming whatever I'm going through. So I hope you know wherever you come from and wherever you're going, you're welcome here just as you are. And we would love the chance to connect with you. So if you haven't texted in before, you can text North Shore to 97000 and we would love the chance just to reach out to you and get to know you a little bit. There is so much more to North Shore than just what happens here on the weekends. So if you are curious about some of the ways people get involved in this community, or if you ever feel like you're kind of watching other people connect but wanting to find your place here, I hope you'll join us for an experience we're hosting really soon called Starting Point. I thought the best way for you to hear more about it is actually to get to know some Starting Point participants from our last series. So I chatted with an awesome couple this week, Jeffrey and Megan, and just wanted to share a little bit of that conversation with you. So here you go. 
Well, hey, Jeffrey and Megan, good to see you guys again. I miss seeing you since our last starting point, but I wanted to uh, let some of the folks at North Shore just hear more about how you decided to jump in on our last series and uh, what it was like for you. The starting point experience was really laid back and is a very um, comfortable environment. I think just even having it on Zoom and it's got to give us a, a better picture of who's going to North Shore, what kind of questions people are asking. And what was starting point like for you guys coming in without knowing much about the church, but just wanting to get connected? Well, I had said um, to Jeffrey that I felt more love than I have in a long time, mm -hmm. which is the, the welcome pack coming through the mail. And it was so sweet and thoughtful. Like every little gift just, it really was really sweet to us. We um, made the decision to go to North Shore after just the first week of Starting Point because we just felt so connected to it immediately. So it was just that impactful to us that we just made the decision that week to just start attending there full time. So. Yay. We loved that beautiful. all the staff was there yeah. um, the first week because got more of a sense of who you guys are and um, what you guys believe and that was important to us. Well, I know we're so glad that um, you guys made that decision and it's changed a lot of even your family's course in the last few months <laughs> to have uh, come through that and so I'm so thrilled that you're part of our community and I know this is just the beginning. Thank you so much for sharing and I hope maybe other people will hear your story and see themselves in it a little bit and might take that step. So yeah. Yay. Thanks guys. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Aren't they great? Uh, we have had over a hundred people participate in starting point in the last year. And we hear from so many of them that the time investment they made of just a few hours has paid off many times over in the way that they have found a group of friends who've been able to support them through a tough season or gotten plugged into a ministry here that they didn't even know about until they participated and learned about it through Starting Point. And I know it's changing their lives for the better, even months and years after having gone through the experience. So I know how life goes. The weeks go by so fast. It is easy to just go Sunday to Sunday, weekend to weekend. But now is your opportunity to jump in and really be part of the incredible things God's doing here and that he wants to do in your life too. Um, we have our first session starting this week on Zoom for four Tuesday nights from 7 to 8 p.m. And I would love to see you there. Our hosts are going to be posting a link in the sign up uh, window below, or you can go to our website and read all about Starting Point and sign up there as well. God has been doing such good things in people like Jeffrey and Megan's lives through this church. And I just love thinking about the lives he's going to continue changing through this community in the years ahead. If you're a regular giver at North Shore, thank you. And if you'd like to give today, you can do that by going to northshore.church slash give. I hope it's a blessing to you to get to see your dollars have an impact that makes such a huge difference in people's lives. And how cool is it that all of us are online from all over the country and across the world, and yet we get to be together here in spirit. Uh, so whether you're cozied up in your jammies here in Seattle or watching from a coffee shop across the country, I invite you to think about all the people who are here watching with you and worshiping with you as we sing together. Let's do that now.
come when every knee bows before your name but we will not wait until it does for here and now shall your king Hey everybody, welcome to North Shore. My name is Scotty Scruggs and I am so glad that you've taken some time to be with us today. Question, how many of you have ever had to move to a different home or maybe a new apartment? I'm guessing most of you have at some point in your life, though I just read about a family in Brooklyn that's been in the same house for 72 years, 72 years. But for the rest of us, you know what it's like to have to pack up everything, box everything, and move. Well, years ago, I moved from Vancouver, British Columbia, where I had been a graduate student, to California, where I was taking a job as a college pastor. So I rented a 4 by 8 trailer, filled the trailer and my car with as much stuff as they could hold, and then I set out for California. Now, the other detail you need to know about this story is that I've been driving the same car for several years, so I knew exactly how many miles I could go on a single tank of gas. I mean, I didn't need the gauge, I didn't need that little fuel warning light, because I never run out of gas. So, I set out for California, drove through Washington and then Oregon, and by the time I was crossing into California, it was getting pretty late, and I was driving through the last town for about 40 to 50 miles or so. But according to my mileage and my calculations, I had enough fuel to make it to the next town. So I just kept on driving. But then the road began to be a little more uphill than I was expecting. There was actually a mountain pass ahead. But I just kept going. And then the little fuel warning light came on. But I just kept going. And then my gas gauge actually hit E, like right there on the E, but I just kept going because I had done the calculations, I had done the math, and I never run out of gas. Well, just as my car reached the top of that pass, the engine began to sputter, and the accelerator kind of stopped really accelerating. Any guesses on what was happening? Yeah, you know, I was running out of gas. You see, as much as I had my normal fuel consumption down to an exact science, I didn't factor in the impact of driving uphill, or pulling a much heavier load. And now, it was late, it was dark, and I was miles from a gas station. So I did the only thing that I could think of, I put the car in neutral, and I just started to coast all the way down the mountain, like mile after mile after mile, my hands like squeezing the wheel all the way down. And get this, just as the road was beginning to level out, I saw a gas station. And I literally coasted up the exit ramp, around the corner, and up to a fuel pump, just as my car lost power. And I thought to myself, you see, I never run out of gas. Now, here's why I tell you that story. Because a lot of people approach life like I approach driving. You see, we simply assume, I know how far I can go. I know how much I can handle. And I always have what it takes. I don't run out of gas. That happens to other people. But then, COVID happened. 
And suddenly, we were all driving uphill and pulling a much heavier load. And no one knew long, how long the hill would be or how much fuel it would take to get through everyday life. And here's the thing. We've been driving this way for over a year. And even though, even though there is a light at the end of the tunnel, that doesn't mean the stress of this past year hasn't taken its toll. Now, doctors and psychologists have long known about the dangerous toll that stress can take on the human body. Many of you know all about this. We know that increased or excessive stress will impact you physically. Things like fatigue, headaches, increased blood pressure, insomnia. It will also impact you psychologically. Things like excessive worry, apathy, forgetfulness, difficulty making decisions, impatience, and even depression. And stress can also impact you behaviorally. Things like excessive eating, outbursts of anger, increased use of alcohol, compulsive sexual behavior, irritation with loved ones, and the list can go on and on and on. Well, after a year of living in this pandemic, these are not just issues that a few people are facing. These are issues that almost everybody is facing because we've all been driving uphill and pulling a much heavier load, which is why we're kicking off a brand new series called I Can Relate. Because after a year in COVID, you're not the only one who's running on empty or who's fallen back into bad habits or secret struggles or who's battling depression or discouragement or who's facing challenges in your marriage or your family. I mean, even though I'm a pastor, I've experienced that feeling of running on empty this past year. I felt angry, short-tempered, discouraged at times. And Nina and I have walked through some really difficult moments this year in our marriage. And not because either one of us has become like a really bad person, but because we've been driving uphill and pulling a much heavier load. So for the next few weeks, we're going to talk about what the Bible has to say to people who are burned out, stressed out, or just plain worn out. We're going to talk about anger issues and being anxious about the future and how to kick old habits that have come roaring back into our lives, as well as the impact this pandemic has had on marriages and families. In fact, best-selling authors and psychologists Les and Leslie Parrott are going to be here with me next month to talk about that. And just so you know, the goal of this series isn't to put some fuel back in the tank and just kind of keep on going. The goal is to grow. The goal is to build a stronger faith or to rebuild your faith if you feel like your faith has kind of crumbled over the past year. Because here's the thing, God wants to use this past season to prepare you for the next one, which is why I am really excited about the journey we're about to take. And I hope this gets you excited as well. And by the way, if you're watching and you are not a follower of Jesus, I am so glad you're here and I'm so excited about how these messages could be really helpful to your life because you've been driving uphill too and you've been carrying a heavier load too. No matter what you think about God right now, you were never meant to be driving that way alone. But today, I wanna start with some rather remarkable words that Jesus once said to people who were burned out, stressed out, and just worn out. So if you have a Bible or a Bible app on your phone, you can open it to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 11, or you can simply follow along with me here on the screen. Now before we jump into the text, the background for this one is really important. Jesus has just sent his disciples out on their first, uh, kinda like their first mission trip. He sent them out into the towns and villages of Galilee to announce that the kingdom of God has come into the world in the person of Jesus. But then he warns them that this journey, this trip, this challenge is not going to be easy. He tells them they're going to be rejected and hated and even persecuted. And so if you think about it, the backdrop for the story isn't the disciples returning from vacation or the spa or a great round of golf. They've been beaten up and worn down. If there's a moment when they would be running on empty, it would be right now. And so Jesus prays, and it's in that prayer that Jesus says these remarkable words. Look what he says. Jesus says, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
Now, just so you know, a yoke, if that's kind of a strange word, was uh, a wooden beam or harness that would connect two oxen together so they could plow a field. Here's actually a picture, kind of a modern picture of what that might actually look like. And Jesus is saying in this text, you know, attach yourself to me, walk in step with me, follow my directions, move at my pace. And the result of this being yoked to Jesus or attached to Jesus isn't another task or another duty or another obligation. The result, he says, is what? Rest. And by the way, the Bible's definition of rest isn't like a passive avoidance of work or activity. It's an active sense of peace and contentment and gratitude to which many of us might say if only right I mean if only this pandemic was over I could rest or if only I didn't feel so much uncertainty about my future or if only I wasn't so worried about my kids or if only I thought that this country was going in the right direction or if only my spouse would do what I want them to do anyone else ever think that one if only I had more time if only if only if only then I could rest. Well, if you hear nothing else in this message, hear this. Jesus doesn't say that rest is an if only kind of thing. It's a he can give this to you kind of thing. In other words, real rest, it's not a product of modifying your circumstances. It's a product of changing your yoke. In other words, it's about what, or better yet, who you are connected to, who you are attached to. So then here's the question. How do we take on the yoke of Jesus? How do we find real rest? Well, I want to share four quick observations with you to help you answer this question in your life. So here's observation number one. Know that Jesus' heart is for the weary. Jesus' heart is for the weary the weary. Preacher named Charles Spurgeon once noted that the Gospels tell us a lot about Jesus' birth, his teaching, his power to heal, his identity as God's son, and his eventual death and resurrection. But there's only one place in all four Gospels that Jesus tells us about his heart. And it's here when he says, I am gentle and humble in heart not reactive not harsh not punitive not short-tempered another way to say it is jesus is access is accessible and approachable and available and of course a lot of people have almost the opposite view of god right we hear words like god is holy and all powerful and mighty and we think that means god is inaccessible unapproachable unavailable far away on a throne somewhere else I mean, just thinking about that reminded me of a couple years ago and going out on Lake Washington and seeing the lakeside home of one of the wealthiest people in the world. I won't say who it is, but if you're from around here, you probably know who I'm talking about. It's a home that's over 66,000 square feet. It's been valued, get this, at over $127 million. It has six kitchens, 24 bathrooms, a 60-foot pool, a 25,000 square foot gym, a library that houses over $30 million worth of manuscripts, and a 23-car garage. Outside the home, there's an artificial stream stocked with salmon, and the sand on the lakeshore gets imported from a tropical beach. But of course, it was almost impossible to see any of this from out on the lake because you can't even get close to the house. I mean, there's like armed security, and electronic security. You have to be somebody really, really special to have access to that home. In fact, years ago, someone paid $35,000 at an auction just to take a tour. So that's inaccessible. But that's not Jesus. Jesus said, I am gentle and humble in heart, meaning I'm accessible, I'm available. In fact, Jesus said, come to me all who are what? Weary and burdened. The invitation is actually for a very particular kind of person. And it's not the perfect and well put together or the wise or spiritually worthy. This invitation is for the weary. It's for those who are carrying heavy loads up steep hills have a good friend whose husband was recently diagnosed with cancer. There's a wonderful woman here in our church who just recently lost her son. 
There are families that are at their breaking point. There are spouses who are at their wits ends. There are people carrying financial burdens and relational burdens and emotional burdens and they're not sure they can take even one more step. Here's the thing. If that's you, Jesus is talking to you. This invitation is for you. His heart, it's for you. And if we're going to grow in this season together, if we're going to grow and rebuild our faith, it starts with trusting that Jesus is for us and that he can handle our burdens because his heart is for the weary. That's the first thing. Here's the second observation. Jesus is our source, not our resource. Jesus is our source, not our resource. Uh, A pastor named Tony Evans once said, there's a big difference between source and resource. He actually wrote these words. He said, God is your source and everything else is just a resource, which is exactly what Jesus is saying in this text. That's why he says, come to me and I will give you rest. In other words, I am the source and rest, it's just a resource. Now, it's an important resource. In fact, it's a vital resource you need it in your life. I was just recently talking to a university professor on the East Coast who's doing some research that involves the impact of COVID on churches and pastors. And he asked me to describe what the first few months of the pandemic were like for me as a pastor. And I had to tell him, I don't know. And he said, what do you mean you don't know? And I said, I can't really remember. He said, what do you mean you can't remember? And I said, well, just a few weeks before the pandemic began, we had a new baby a baby whom we love and cherish, but who refused to sleep for about six months. And when you don't sleep, your brain literally is unable to store new memories, which is why from last March through about June, it's basically all one big blur. I mean, I can't remember those months at all, which I've been told is a gift from God because I hear they were kind of awful. But all that is to say, rest is vital, it's essential, but it's not the source of peace or contentment or gratitude. See, the problem is we tend to confuse resource with source. And when we do, it always leads to more stress and fear and frustration in life. Think about money. We do this with money. Money is an amazing resource. It allows us to buy things and do things and be generous with others. It's a great resource. But if we treat money as our source of security or well-being, what happens? Well, we end up anxious, worried, fearful, even greedy. Because money, it's a great resource in life, but it's not the source of life. The same could be said about your resume. A resume can be a great resource for getting a job or starting a new career. But if you're counting on a resume to be the source of fulfillment or happiness, you're going to feel empty and exhausted trying to make it better and better and better because your resume is just a resource. It's not the source and we, don't just treat, and we don't just treat resources like the source of life. Sometimes, sometimes we treat the source like it's just a resource. Sometimes we treat God like he's just another resource out there to help us get what we want in life. Which is why Jesus says, come to me. Not just go to church or try to avoid sin. Come to me and take my yoke upon you. And here's the deal. An oxen can only be attached to one yoke at a time. So our hope, our source, is not Jesus and something else. It's Jesus only. Because Jesus is not one of many different resources who can help us find rest. He is our source. He is our hope. He is our life. He is our provider. He is our redeemer. He is our forgiver. He is our teacher. He is our savior, which is why Jesus says, come to me, come to me, take my yoke upon you, and I will give you what you need. So question, have you been going to Jesus as your source this year? Or have you been trying to find rest or security or comfort or hope through the resources he's given you? And as you think about that, there's a third observation I want to make, and it's this. True rest, true rest in life isn't just about relaxing. It isn't just about relaxing. 
Now, for those of you who live here in the Pacific Northwest, you know there are actually 11 different seasons in the state of Washington. I have them printed right here, 11 seasons. There's winter and then full spring, another winter, and then spring of deception. If you're in town right now, you know this is what we're going through right now. It's sunny and beautiful, but don't be fooled. Third winter is on its way. And then that's followed by mud season, actual spring, summer, false fall, second summer, which is like one week in early September, and then actual actual fall. Now, I have to say, there is no place I would rather be in the whole world than Seattle in the summer. I mean, this time of year, it's just amazing. It's these multiple seasons of winter that get you, right? Which is why so many people want to get away or get out of town somewhere between winter and third winter. Because we need the sun. We need a break. We want to relax. And after the year we've just had, that's more true than ever. I mean, we're going through COVID fatigue and pandemic fatigue and mask fatigue and Zoom fatigue. I think there's even something called fatigue fatigue. And getting away, taking a break, being able to relax is a really, really good thing. But true rest, true rest, the rest your soul needs isn't just a matter of relaxing. Look back at what Jesus said. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from me and you shall find rest for your souls. In other words, to find rest for your soul, the rest you need, you need to be connected to Jesus, attached to Jesus, learning from Jesus. That's what the yoke was all about. In fact, in the ancient world, farmers would often pair an experienced ox with a less experienced one so the younger one could learn what to do while the more seasoned one could bear the bulk of the load. You see, think about it this way. Work is not what makes our soul weary and burdened. Sometimes work can be really energizing to our souls. So work isn't the main issue, nor is walking through difficulty or challenge. I mean, I've seen so many people grow stronger and more resilient in times of struggle in their life. So it's not work or even difficulty that makes us weary. What makes us weary is not having the right yoke. It's not having someone who can teach us how to live in the midst of difficult or challenging circumstances. And by the way, this isn't just a problem for people who uh, don't know God. It's a problem for people who do. I know so many Christians who try to stay connected with God or yoked to Jesus by just following the rules or avoiding certain sins. Sometimes we even try to use rule keeping to strengthen our faith or get closer to God. We say things like, I promise to do all the right things from now on out. And maybe you've said something like that. Well, here's the thing. That's actually the hardest way to live because not only are you setting yourself up to fail, but you're likely going to associate that feeling of failure with Jesus. So instead of making promises to Jesus we can't really keep, We need to actually do something different. We need to examine our lives to find those attachments, those other yokes that have taken priority over Jesus. I mean, think about your own life. It could be your career. It could be success or the drive to succeed. It could be money or wealth. It could be your reputation or popularity. It could even be a political conviction. It could be a habit or a secret. After a year in COVID, we all need to do what in recovery they call a fearless and searching inventory of our lives. Maybe this week, maybe this week, you could actually take some time and just look at what's been happening inside your heart over this year. And just start by naming it, writing it down. And then if you're feeling really bold, take that list and share it with a trusted friend or a mentor in your life. And by the way, if you don't have someone in your life like that, let us know. That's why we have life groups here at North Shore that are all about having people that are connected to you and know you. And we'd love to help you get connected to one. But finding rest for your soul is gonna take more than just relaxing because relaxing is all about what we need a break from. But real rest is all about who we are connected to. Which leads me to the fourth and final observation, and it's simply this. Trusting Jesus is the easier way. Trusting Jesus is always the easier way. You know, when I first studied this passage of Scripture, I remember thinking, wow, Jesus, you're either not being honest or you're really not very self-aware because I've looked at your life and it didn't look easy. Me, right? I mean, Jesus lived a really hard life. He was born into poverty. He lived as a refugee in a foreign country. 
He made a very meager living as a simple carpenter. He didn't have a lot of money or possessions or property or power. During his ministry, he was basically homeless. People were always asking him for something. And by the end of his life, most of his so-called friends had pretty much abandoned him. And then he was falsely accused and convicted and executed on a Roman cross. I mean, what in the world about that is easy? Answer? Nothing. You know, Jesus once said, he kind of talked about this, that his, his way of life was the narrow way and few would actually find it and take it because it can appear to be so difficult. I mean, sacrificial, uh, sacrificial generosity, it looks so hard. Sexual holiness, it looks so hard. Loving your enemies, it looks so hard to do, right? But here's the thing. Living a life consumed by greed and wealth, it's actually so much harder. Living a life of so-called sexual freedom without the intimacy and commitment of marriage, it's so much harder. Living a life of resentment and ongoing bitterness towards others, it's actually so much harder. You see, while Jesus' way of life may not seem easy, it's always easier than life without him. It's always easier than life without him because you'll face all the same challenges, but you'll be yoked only to yourself and you'll be left to manage life only by your own strength. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I can't imagine going through this past year without Jesus. Did I do this year perfectly? No. Do I have regrets? Absolutely I do. Would I do some things differently? Sure I would. But I can't even imagine going through those long days or fearful nights or hard moments without Jesus. I can't imagine trying to navigate the pressures this season put on my marriage and my family without Jesus. I can't imagine trying to lead an organization without Jesus. And I've heard that time and time again this year from people in our church walking through much more challenging circumstances than I have, like terminal cancer or the loss of a child, And by the way, none of them said this year was easy, but they all said in some way or another, I can't imagine what I would have done if I didn't have Jesus. Because at the end of the day, Jesus doesn't just reach out to weary people. He actually became one himself. That's right, the holy, all-powerful, mighty God became a human being. He faced all the same difficulties and disappointments. And at the end of his life, he carried the heaviest of loads, up a hill called Calvary, where he paid the price for my sin and your sin, which means he's the only God who can look at your life and say, I can relate to everything you're going through, everything you're worried about. I love how the writer of the book of Hebrews puts it. He writes this, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin, So let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. You see, in Jesus, God became approachable. In Jesus, grace became tangible. In Jesus, true rest became available. He just said, you got to come to me. You have to come to me, which at its core is just an invitation to trust him. Trust him in your marriage right now. Trust him in your work right now. Trust him with your financial situation right now. Trust him with your pain. Trust him with that diagnosis. Trust him with that challenge in your family. Trust him with whatever burden you've been carrying. You see, life with Jesus, rest in Jesus is all about trust. And by the way, I'm not just talking to people who are just starting out in their faith. Some of you have been walking with God for a long, long time. But right now, your faith feels far from what it used to or distant or even shallow. Well, over the next few weeks, we're going to talk a lot about for why that is and what you can do about it. But it begins, it begins with trust. It begins with reconnecting with Jesus It begins with taking off whatever yoke you've been using and saying, Jesus, I want to restart with you. I want to learn again from you. I want to walk again with you. I want to find rest with you. And so I want to give all of you a chance to talk to Jesus about that right now. So if you would, if you just close your eyes for just a moment. 
and we're gonna pray. And what I want you to do right now as you think, as you close your eyes and we have this moment of prayer is just have a little moment to look inside and think about what have you been trusting? What resource have you been leaning on maybe instead of the real source? Let's talk to Jesus about that right now. Jesus, we come before you weary and burdened, more so than maybe we ever have been before. After a year of carrying heavy loads uphill, some of us have run out of gas maybe months ago, and now we come before you, before that throne of grace to receive the help we need. Help us right now identify the places in our lives where we have been unwilling or unable to trust you. Help us take your yoke, attach ourselves to you so we can walk with you and learn from you and be with you and find rest with you. And for everybody right now who's feeling burned out, stressed out, or just worn out, remind them, Jesus, that your heart is for them. It's with them. It's by them. It's carrying them. Jesus, only you can do this for us. And we're so grateful that when you came, you came to find us and restore us and renew us. And in you and with you, we can find the rest and the contentment and the gratitude and the peace we so desperately need. God, help us. Jesus, help us as we do that this week and each week in this series as we go. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. And everybody said, amen.
Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It was great to spend the morning with you. Yeah, and if you made a first time decision to follow Jesus, first of all, we just want to say congratulations. Yeah. We are so excited for you. Uh, we would love to just connect with you, get you more information, walk through any questions that you have. Uh, if you're on Facebook, just let one of our chat hosts know in the comment section or the website, you can do that. And if you're on one of our other platforms, head over to the website, northshore.church. There's a little chat bubble in the corner. You can click that and uh, we would love, love to connect with you. Yep. And just a reminder, this is your last chance to sign up for Starting Point. We begin on Tuesday night. So go to northshore.church slash starting point and we would love to see you there. Well, once again, thank you guys for joining us here at North Shore Online. We will see you guys either on Tuesday at Starting Point yep. or, or right back week. here next week. Yep. Have a great uh, week, everyone. See ya.